Hello, uh, welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Kamel and I'm going to be talking to you guys today about Halix Rigidus, fusion or replacement, choosing the right surgery for you. So Halix Rigidus uh, is big to arthritis and um, it comes in the form of pain and swelling around the big toe. Some people may mistake it for a bunion, um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna dive into what this is um, and how you can treat it, and what are some surgical options, and what might be best for you. So as I alluded to before, hallux rigidus is osteoarthritis of the big toe. Hallux rigidus comes from hallux meaning the big toe, and rigidus meaning rigid, uh, because this is often one of the symptoms that comes about with osteoarthritis uh, of the big toe, just like with osteoarthritis of the knee or hip when there's decreased range of motion and stiffness, same thing can happen in the big toe. Big toe jams when walking, and this can be due to several factors, and we'll discuss that a little bit later. But it's that jamming effect that can lead to cartilage breakdown, um, and eventually this causes pain and arthritis. What are the causes? Um, well, we use our big toe for just about anything you can think of. Um, it is uh, one of the main mechanical functions of our of our foot that helps us to propel be able to stoop and to climb, uh, to bend, uh, walk, to run, etc. And so any of these things can, uh, when excessive, can cause uh, breakdown of the cartilage. Now, this just bending the toe and walking is normal. We should all be able to do that. However, if you have structural deformities in the foot, such as with flat feet or high arched feet, or if you're an overpronator, Things like that can lead to excessive forces and pressures within that toe, which uh, can predispose it to um, developing osteoarthritis. You had a previous injury to the big toe, whether you jammed it uh, or your car accident, something like that, that can lead to osteoarthritis as well. Certain type of shoe gear that is not supportive can lead to um, that force going through that big toe that is not supported, uh, which can lead to you know, arthritis. What are some of the symptoms with osteoarthritis in general and with the big toe specifically? So in early stages of osteoarthritis, you'll have pain and stiffness, uh, difficulty with certain activities. You'll have pain with uh, cold or damp weather and swelling and inflammation around the joint. This can happen usually after you've been, you know, active for some time um, and then when you, you're resting towards the end of the day, you might feel this. Uh, later stages, you have a constant pain within the joint. Uh, the, the range of motion progressively gets less and less to the point where you really can't move the big toe anymore. Um, you may even notice some bony enlargements around the joint. And this is from bone spurs, and this is just what we call osteophytes and extra bone growth due to the arthritis. And because of that, you can have so much swelling that you won't be able to fit into certain shoes or be able to do certain activities because it just hurts so much. When it comes to treatment options, you know, I always like to consider non-surgical treatment <clears throat> before considering surgery. And um, there's there are a list of things that can be done before considering surgery. And I, and I think for starters, a good pair of custom foot orthotics and a good pair of shoes can go a long way. If you have a good support of your feet, this can reduce the amount of excessive forces that go through the big toe, which can subsequently lead to less damage and uh, maybe buying, buying you enough time where you don't have to do surgery. Sometimes, however, this may not work and an injection may be beneficial. There are different types of injections that we use, um, but this injection is administered within the joint. This can help to decrease the inflammation that's causing the pain. It's not going to restore any cartilage. Uh, it is just a Band-Aid. However, it can help to buy you some more time, uh, reduce your pain. And then there's physical therapy. Um, physical therapy is very beneficial, help to try to regain some of the strength around the joint, as well as uh, getting as much range of motion as possible. When these <clears throat> non-surgical treatments don't work, that we consider surgery. Um, some 
sometimes uh, non-surgical treatment, depending on how advanced your arthritis is, can last a very long time, but you know, it's very hard to predict and it, it differs from each patient. But when it comes to surgery, there's three main options to consider. Uh, one is called a chylectomy, which is basically just shaving off extra bone growth around the joint that we had talked about before. This can help to reduce some of the jamming effect at the toe, which can be the cause of the limited motion. And by doing that, you might reduce the pain enough uh, where you can you know, have some more time to function. And this is uh, important because there's some patients who don't really wanna commit to uh, a bigger surgery, a more involved surgery. The recovery is uh, you know, a lot more tolerable with a chylectomy. However, it may not be the best option for everyone uh, because it may not do what it needs to in order to give you uh, any relief. But the two surgeries that we're going to kind of dive into are fusions and replacements. So you can see here on the right, uh, the picture, the arthrodesis or the fusion is <clears throat> essentially removing the cartilage from the joint, putting the two bones together and allowing the bones to fuse so that, be, that they eventually become one. Then there's a replacement, and you can see on the right, on the bottom, uh, it's labeled as arthrosurface. It's essentially replacing the joint and creating um, a new one. You know, this is very similar um, to knee replacements and hip replacements. It is a different type of joint and it functions differently. However, the concepts of uh, putting implants uh, are the same. So what are the pros and cons to both? Um, for a fusion, the pros are it's a one and done type of procedure. It has decades of literature that support this procedure and, and how reliable the outcomes are. A lot of people tend to do very well with this procedure. And once they do it, they don't ever have to revisit this issue ever again because they've created no joint uh, for them to have pain from. The cons are you'll have loss of motion because you're, you're removing the joint and you're fusing it. Um, and because of that, that may lead to a less natural gait because that big toe is uh, important in propulsion. Uh, however, what I say to that is, you know, most people, by the time they have such advanced arthritis, they've already uh, have adapted to uh, having little to no motion at the joint. So my argument is always fusing it is essentially going to keep your foot, uh, your toe from bending as much as, um, as it was before. However, you aren't really having that much motion to begin with. Um, and whenever you fuse a joint, this um, can lead to arthritis and other joints around it because the force is no longer going through that joint. However, with the big toe, this is um, not as much of an issue. And when the onset of arthritis in adjacent joints can occur, it's hard to tell. Depends on the activity level of the patient um, and as, as well as uh, other factors. With the replacement, you're essentially gonna, the you know, pros and cons are essentially gonna be the opposite. Um, with the replacement, you're gonna have a more natural gait and more range of motion because although we are replacing the joint, we are, we, there is a joint for, uh, for movement. Um, what, you know, one thing I always tell my patients is that if you have significant scarring of the soft tissue structures around the joint and have less motion before your surgery, you might have some increase in motion. However, don't expect it to be 90 degrees uh, or what it was uh, when you were younger. That, that's, that's just one of the uh, things that I always make sure my patients understand. And the cons are you may need to have another surgery. You can have a replacement, but the poly within the, uh, within the joint that's used in the implants can wear down and you may need to have another surgery. That could be 10 years later. So that's something to consider. So when would one consider a replacement? So if you have a pretty active lifestyle that relies on the ability to have some motion at the joint, you may wanna consider a replacement. Um, and if that motion is important to you, if you, know, if you don't have 
such an end stage arthritis, this could be the procedure for you. Um, who should not have replacement surgery? If you have any of these comorbidities, such as bone infections, um, vascular problems or venous stasis problems, diabetes, uh, obesity, or if you have high impact, these are all contraindications to to consider fusion. If you're the type of patient who may not necessarily need to have motion in their joint, you're a community ambulator, uh, but you've, you have know, you used to once be active, but now you're not so much, and you've got arthritis from whatever activity you used to do, um, and you just want to be done with the toe pain, this might be the right procedure for you. Uh, it's very reliable. You can, it's a one and done type of procedure. You fuse the joint and you move on. Some things to consider with the surgery for both. Um, both of these I like to do under general anesthesia. Sometimes there are certain certain occasions where general, general anesthesia is not indicated and we can do other types of anesthesia. However, most of the time I, I prefer general anesthesia. Both procedures would involve an incision over the big toe to get down to the joint in order to remove the cartilage and either replace it with a new prosthetic for the, for the replacement or to place screws and a plate uh, in order to fuse it. At this point, if I put in a prosthetic, I check the range of motion, make sure everything looks good. And um, it's an outpatient procedure that can be done, you can be in and out, you know, in, in short time. The recovery, so um, it varies from patient to patient. Um, and this is this is just more so your ability to rehab. Um, but recovery can be from about three to nine months. And, and by recovery, I mean, go back to just normal day activity. If you are a high level athlete, it might be three months and it might be six months. Um, it just varies from patient to patient. And then the amount of time that you're non-weight bearing, again, also varies. However, most of my patients are starting to bear weight at two weeks. Uh, and that, that's when the stitches or staples are removed. Until then, uh, a splint is placed from right after the surgery up until the sutures are removed. And then you may start walking at that point with a boot. And during the time of the mobilization, when you're not walking, you can use anything from crutches, walker, knee scooter, or wheelchair, anything that will keep you off of your feet in order to allow for proper healing. There will be physical therapy involved uh, when it's okay to. And this is to help with uh, regaining some of that motion if you have a replacement or with um, decreasing the stiffness in adjacent joints and just kind of getting things moving in your foot again. So which is right for you? Um, as I sort of alluded to, there are many factors to consider. Your overall health, your age, your activity level, the amount of degeneration, just how bad the arthritis is and what your goals are. Um, you know, all these are all things that I would consider when I'm seeing a patient for big toe arthritis. Um, and these are all important questions that you should ask yourself before seeing your doctor. I thank you for your attention and hope to see you soon.